Did you know? Mmm, this soup is delicious. That's not quite Indiana Jones. But this here is most definitely soup. Notice it may contain human remains and we would advise against bathing in Archeo soup. When I'm eating soup, I eat it from a bowl with a spoon. Every so often I like to take my soup to the park or to the library or into a museum because uh, it, it gives me fuel and I enjoy it very much. My favourite soups are Archeo soup. Once again, this is your chance to get your hands on the Nia limited edition Archeo soup tin. I cannot guarantee I won't make more, but as it stands, I probably won't. Ironing is another kind of work that's a lot of little jobs all rolled into one. Advertising. It just seems to be everywhere. Particularly with the advent of television in the mid-20th century. Adverts, promotions and the science of marketing seems to have taken leaps and bounds. After all, these days, you can't even Google something without an advert recommending what you just Googled back at you within moments. The core goal of advertising is to effectively sell you happiness. You need this idea, product, place or notion in your life to complete you. And it works. People even go so far as to say that they have their own favourite advert. But advertising isn't a new thing. A key component of effective advertising is attractive imagery and writing, and these things could certainly be found in ancient Egypt. And around 3000 BC, we find possibly the earliest known advertising slogan. In the ancient city of Thebes, a papyrus was found, where a man called Hapu claimed that he would give a reward, one piece of gold, to anyone who reported the whereabouts of his missing slave, Shem. There was a catch, however. Whoever found Shem should return him to his store. And this is where the slogan comes in. Where the most beautiful fabrics are woven for each person's taste. <laughs> so not only was this person trying to hunt down their lost slave, but they couldn't resist throwing in a bit of marketing. Roman Pompeii is probably the most famous, well-preserved Roman site in the world. And with this state of preservation comes a whole host of slogans and graffiti. In particular, slogans with regard to local politicians, either advertising their own candidacy or bashing the candidacy of others. There's also a wealth of imagery and writing, in particular on walls, selling food and items and uh, other services to passers-by. The Romans certainly knew how to sell their wares. In ancient China, some of the earliest known advertising was entirely oral. The classic of poetry, also known as the Book of Songs, was published around 600 BC and collected poems and songs dating back to between the 7th and the 11th centuries BC. This text mentions bamboo flute players playing songs specifically to sell sweets. But it was during the Song Dynasty between the 10th and 13th centuries AD, that the world's earliest identified, printed, and therefore repeatable advertisement was produced. The raised copper printing plate depicts a rabbit, along with an advertising slogan as follows. Jinan Liu's Fine Needle Shop. We buy high quality steel rods and make fine quality needles to be ready for use at home in no time. <laughs> I laugh because such sophisticated advertising would not be seen in Europe for centuries. In medieval Europe, simple images were used to convey a service or a guild, for example. 
and in 1393, King Richard II decreed that pubs must have signs outside so the examiner and tester of ales would know the location of each pub. These signs usually had to be pictorial because it wasn't guaranteed that the tester could read. It is likely that general literacy in Europe really gathered pace with the advent of the printing press. Here we see the Gutenberg printing press. And once Bibles and important books had been printed, soon people were printing all sorts of stories and advertisements. And by the 19th through to the 20th centuries, printed advertisements were cheap and everywhere. Companies would send out small groups of children literally to plaster entire walls and poster wars would break out. So advertising is surprisingly old and it's always been about brand awareness, linking a certain item or product with an idea or a name. In recent years advertising has embraced all manner of new media from radio to television from television to the internet. Basically, where your eyes are is where adverts want to be. But as harassed as we may feel, believe it or not, we are nowhere near as bombarded in terms of square foot advertising as those people who lived in the 19th and early 20th centuries. We have it relatively light. And finally, it's time for a confession. I do actually have a favorite advert. It's the Bile Beans advert, still found to this day on the side of a building in York. Fantastic. <laughs>